and welcome to Retro TV Trivia. I'm your host, Pat McCormack, from the Golden Rage of TV. On today's podcast, you'll hear my interview with TV legend and former teen idol, Michael Gray. Listen as we pick up from our previous YouTube live stream conversation and touch on his many memories of being plastered on the cover of Teeny Bop magazines like Tiger Beat. Michael reveals the fascinating effect it had on his career, both good and bad. And of course, we reminisce about his signature role as Billy Batson in the Saturday morning action-adventure series Shazam. All of Michael's stories are truly amazing, so enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the podcast, TV's Michael Gray. Michael! Hi, Pat. (laughs) Good to talk to you again, my friend. It's been a few months. It has. Good to talk to you again, too. Last time, um, folks, if you didn't, if you don't know, uh, Michael joined me on my uh, live stream on my YouTube channel, Golden Rage of TV, and now he's doing a, a reappearance with me on my Retro TV Trivia podcast, and I can't thank you enough, my friend. Pleasure is mine, Pat. I was going to say before we get started, I do want to I want to give a shout out to our mutual friend who actually introduced us. Uh, his name is Barry King. Barry's a great guy. Yes, he is. Um, he has his show, BK on the Air, which is at WBHF uh, in Cartersville. And his show, BK on the Air, airs every Saturday morning from 10 to noon. And I've been a proud proud part of that show for the last three years now. It's, uh, but yes, he said, you know, I'm good friends with Michael Gray, and how would you like to inter- interview him? <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> well, gee, don't twist my arm. So thank you, Barry. Yeah, I've been on his show a few times. Yes, I, and I'd heard you too. And so it was like, all right, well, I, I've got to talk to this gentleman because I'm a fan. And He's a great guy. They both have wives the same name, Stacy. That's right. That's right. He calls his Mrs. BK sometimes. I'm, I'm guessing you don't call yours Mrs. M.G., no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he would mentioned that to me, too. And, um, like I said, we're both bona fide fans. So the the thing that I'm really happy about and that I've been seeing with your, your recent posts, because I follow you on Twitter and Facebook, and that is, is that you have been getting back out on the fan circuit. Yeah. Doing some uh, autograph shows and some Comic-Cons. Yeah, I'm hoping to do more. And one of the reasons people want me to do them is because Shazam TV show is back on Tubi TV. They're streaming it again. So fans are loving it. Yes, as they should, as they should. And I saw you were, you're actually doing some of them with John Davey, correct? I do so many comic cons with John Davey, yeah. He's my buddy. Yeah, well, I watched an interview with you guys and it looked like that. And that's great. You know, when you guys... Could, come away from a show, and that's created a lifelong friendship. I know that you and Les Tremaine were very close, too. Les and I loved each other. It was great. He was so much older than me, but it doesn't matter. We became very, very good friends. He was such a nice guy. Even after we started shooting, stopped shooting Shazam, we became buddies. We would hang out together. Actually, one time during Christmas time, my parents were living up in Carmel, California. So he and his wife flew up to Carmel, and they had Christmas dinner with us. My mom and dad were so surprised to meet him because they used to watch him. They used to listen to him on radio back in, you know, in the 30s and stuff. Right. Yeah. My mother was thrilled and my dad was too. And you could say, see, I've got friends in high places. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> Les was a great guy. He was a fantastic. And he was, I've worked with a lot of celebrities over my life in this business. And I've known a lot also that I've met over the periods of time, whatever. So many different celebrities, big ones like Les. And Les was the most humble one I've ever met in my entire life. Oh, that's great. I love hearing stuff like that. You know, and quite frankly, it it should go hand in hand. And you hear the folks that have really lasted in the business. Their reputations are usually, you know, just shining, good people, down to earth, humble. Yeah. But just talented as heck, too. <laughs> so it's, yeah. <laughs> some people can be too talented. It goes to their head, and then you get that conceited, you know, celebrity thing, which fortunately I have not seen too much. I, has there ever been anyone that's 
actually put you off that way, I, you don't have to talk about this if you don't want to ma- ma- mention any names, unless they're dead already. I, I, was anybody that ever made you go, what a conceited jerk. <laughs> well, you know what happened on Little People, right? My TV series, Little People? I know the show, and I know Shelly, and I know Brian. What else can you tell me? Well, back in those days, I was a teenage idol, so I was on the front cover of Fave magazines and Tiger Root magazines. My manager owned them. Oh, wow. So they were promoting me all over the magazines that I was on Little People TV series. Mm-hmm. One of them Michael Gray's new TV show. So there were thousands of people that, that read Tiger Beat and Fave magazines every single month. They were both so popular. Right. And one of the magazines said Michael Gray starred Little People. Well, that was an issue right there. Uh-huh. Brian didn't like that. Because mm. he was the star, so was Shelly. And Shelly was great. I had a crush on her when I was a kid. So to work with her, was, again, was amazing. Yeah, we had that in common. <laughs> yeah, great. And one of my episodes of The Little People, I was supposed to ask her to marry me. <laughs> right. Which I thought was cool. She was great. But I only did 26 episodes. Back then, when you did a TV series, you did 26 episodes a year. And they re-ran them once a year. So it was 52 episodes, basically. 26 you shot. And they ran them one time. So it was 52 weeks. Right. Ryan didn't like the fact that when the magazine said Michael Gray star little people and he had me removed from the show. Oh, that's terrible. I'm so yeah. sorry. I hate hearing stuff like that. You know, and I, I, I guess the upper echelon of the movie star, you know, then going to television, which is what happened in his case, you know, makes yeah. you wonder if that just kind of makes you more um, afraid or uh, fearful of being upstaged or, you know, it just meant that doesn't make any sense to me because you're a big star already. What, what are you worried about? <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah. And, and of course, now say I was your age with a girlfriend on that show. I might be a little bit jealous of you. I'm, I, I am. No, I would be. I would be. <laughs> You're not going to work with that Michael Ray guy. He's too darn good looking. So get him off the show. <laughs> it's like, you can get rid of me for that. <laughs> I liked working with Brian for the year because he was such a, an amazing, you know, legend. I liked working with him. It was fantastic until that issue happened. And again, I was thrilled to meet Shelley Fabray too. Thrilled. Well, and again, even then, that's what's weird about it is it's, I don't know if this is a proper term, but they were, quote, unquote, and has been said, teeny bop magazines. So how does that in any way threaten a network television show or or a star? uh, I mean, maybe I'm going too deep into this, but I find that really fascinating. Well, because of Tiger Beat and Fave, we boosted the ratings of the TV show. Uh, So many kids were reading Tiger Beat and Fave magazines. So now the... The ratings were huge because <laughs> so many, you know, normally the, you know, as far as the age range, you watch a Friday night TV series like that. It was a certain age range. But now because they were posting it more because um, Tiger Beat Favor were posting it, now the age range was much larger because so many teenage girls were watching the show now. So it helped the show. It really did. Which makes it even more ironic. You know, <laughs> it's good for the show, but it's, Bad for who? <laughs> Brian Keith? The movie star? It was star? the most popular show in that time zone on, on Friday Night TV. The most popular show. Right. Oh, I remember it. I do. Yeah. And I remember you being on it as well. So, yeah. you know, at least they it is. They the name of the show to the Brian Keith show. Right. Yeah. That, I guess that tells you something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not too many comments, but you're right. That tells me something right there. Yeah. Change the name of the Brian Keith show. Right. Right. And I mean, he'd already had family affair behind him at that point, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he was great in family affair. Oh, which was a very successful show, too. Yes, it was. So yep. it makes you go, what's wrong? Now, I know he'd been through a lot of a lot of turmoil in his life, for sure. And yes. I, who knows what he was going through at the time. Uh, maybe you better than anyone. But uh, that's just too bad. That's just too bad. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, that was yeah, that was the end of my career for a while because I was supposed to start doing concerts back then too. 
Because right. if you're a teenage right. diner back then, if you had a primetime TV series on, you'd do concerts like David Cassidy and Bobby Sherman. I was taking singing lessons. We recorded records. So I was supposed to start doing concerts. But that ended too. Yeah. Now, th- that brings up a good question in that it, it seemed to be that you had to be the package deal at a certain time, or especially if you were on the cover of, of Tiger Beat, you know, the movie stars, there was the big three. You had to act, sing, and dance, correct? Yeah. And so is that, you know, is that a bleed off from that traditional, well, we want the full schmeal of entertainer, or how much money can we make off this guy while we can? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And then you've got guys that are, that have that natural talent of songwriting, singing, and being a heartthrob at the same time, you know, like like David Cassidy, and because of the magazines or the, the popularity of his um, heartthrob status. And so you felt, did you feel that that's what they were doing with you? I mean, they were just trying to manufacture uh, a more uh, flexible <laughs> Michael Gray? Good possibility. <laughs> and so you did, but you did it. I mean, you took it to to fruition, and you made albums? Did you make records? We cut, We recorded three records, mm-hmm. and they were never released because, again, the career was ended as far as being a singer. So the records were never released. Now, do I dare ask you, how and why was that ended? Well... It was vitally important if you're recording, if you're just singing back then, you're really supposed to have a primetime TV series because that created so many concerts. Right. So the only time I really sang was I did Dinah Shore. I did two episodes of her show or three episodes of her show. I forgot what it was, two or three. And one of the episodes, I sang one of my songs. Right. When she introduced me and brought me out, I walked out on stage and the orchestra started playing music for one of my songs. So I sang one of the songs on, on, on her show. That was my first and last appearance singing songs, my first and last performance. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, again, it just seems like, look, your talent was in acting. Clearly, that was your first, that was your first love. Were you a music, I loved it. Yeah. Were you a music fan? Did you consider yourself a person that wanted to become a, a, a singing star or a musician or a songwriter of sorts? I was a big music fan, big time. I love music, musicians and big bands. So I wanted to do both. Mm. You see? I was lucky once to see the Beatles on stage in Miami Beach. Wow. When Ed Sullivan had him on his show the second time, they shot it down in Miami Beach in a big hotel. That's right. Grand Ballroom, one of the hotels. And one of my friends I went to high school with, her father got tickets, invited us to go. So I went with his daughter. We watched the Beatles on stage. That was oh. an amazing evening. Amazing. Oh, wow. Yeah. I've seen video of that performance. And folks, if you're a Beatles fan, you should watch it. Their their version of this boy singing the three-part harmony into one mic is astonishing. <laughs> it was. It was amazing. I love the Beatles. So good. They were such, you know, they were so on the top of their game at that time, too. I mean, not that they ever weren't, but they were primed and... Uh, Gosh, what a, what a special thing that you got to witness it firsthand. They almost ended up at my parents' house, actually. It's interesting. Oh, that's right. I think it was Life or Look magazine. I forgot which one it was. We were going to, they were going to do a story about the Beatles in Miami Beach. And they wanted to shoot them in, some pictures of them in somebody's pool. And I had a friend that was an agent down there. And she asked me if my parents would allow that. I said, of course. My father, my father liked the Beatles, too. But unfortunately, our house is right next to a bridge that people crossed all day long. And they said they couldn't do it because too many people could look off the bridge and see the Beatles in our backyard and our pool. So it didn't happen. That would have been fantastic having the Beatles in my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> yes, not so fa- fantastic with screaming 15 year olds falling off the bridge, though. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> I guess so long as they hit the water, there's a chance. But <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that would have been an interesting memory. I'm sure that would have that would have stuck with you a lot longer too. <laughs> Definitely, the rest of my life. Yeah. The Beatles were swimming in my pool. That would have been amazing. <laughs> I'm never going to change the water. Yeah, really, <laughs> exactly right. 
<laughs> I can sell a cup to this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can actually bottle it and sell it, right? Yeah. Could you imagine? Buy some beetle water. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> this contains the actual DNA of Paul McCartney. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. I think I think one of them may have actually relieved himself in the pool. So I'm not kidding when I say that. <laughs> Well, that's like when I was a kid, too, when I lived in Miami Beach. We used to go to certain hotels on Collins Avenue, and one of the hotels we went to, if people, and most people back then, did urinate in pools. So they had a chemical in the pool. So if people did urinate in the pool at this hotel, the water would turn a different color. And one of the walls in the pool was all glass next to a bar, so people in the bar could watch people swimming underwater. And if people peed, they would see the color, and they'd pull them out of the water and throw them out of the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> you, oh, man. Talk about being caught red-handed. Well, yellow-handed. Yeah. Or, um... <laughs> Something like that, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's terrible. You're out of here. <laughs> Bounce that guy. <laughs> yeah, really. Wow. <laughs> well, so, so Michael— when you were you were at that height when we were talking about earlier when you were getting the covers of the of these teen magazines i know there's you've got some stories when you were kind of surprised by your own popularity kind of the uh the michael mania would occur do you have any fun stories about that when maybe you least expected it or I don't know if I told you before, one of the reasons I ended up in the magazine is because of Burt Reynolds. No. Yeah. When I did it, I did uh, a small part in an ABC movie that we called Run, Simon, Run, mm -hmm. which Burt Reynolds starred in. Right. And I was cast as his brother. I had a very small part in the movie, playing his brother in the movie. And fans saw the, the movie of the week and said, who is this guy, Michael Gray? So actually, when I met Bird on the set, it was cool. We liked, liked meeting each other. It was very cool. So people, teenage idols, I mean, teeny bopper idols, little kids, teenage idols that read the magazines and stuff, contacted Tiger Beer Magazine and said, who is Michael Gray? We saw him on ABC Movie of the Week, Run, Simon, Run, playing Burt Reynolds' brother. So they checked it out to find out who I was. They contacted my agent. This is before I appeared in any Tiger Beer magazines. And they said, we, can we have your client, Michael Gray, come in? We want to do an interview with him. So my agent sent me over to Tiger Beard offices. I went in. They did a photo session with me and did an interview, and they put it in the magazines. Hmm. And fans like seeing it. They, oh, there's Michael Gray. God, Tiger Beard put him in. Tiger Beard and Faye put him in. So the articles, they did more articles and more pictures. That was the beginning of my career as far as being a teenage idol. Because mm. fans loved seeing it. They were contacting Tiger Beard and Faye saying, this is great. Do more pictures of Michael Gray and more interviews. And they did. So the story started small and it kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Then they ended up on the front cover of some of these magazines. And then I did The Little People in 1972. And that's when my career really started taking off as an actor and being a teenage idol. And then it was, you know, I was off The Little People and Shazam continued it. Right. So it was basically because of Brian Keith. <laughs> I mean, Burt Reynolds, excuse me. It was because Burt, of Burt Reynolds, yeah. <laughs> Let's give yeah. credit where credit is due here, Michael. <laughs> yeah, because I played his brother, so that started my career off as being a teenage idol. Wow. You know, not that not that he did so bad himself, but he, he, wasn't, the, he wasn't a teenage idol. He was a legend. I was so thrilled to be working with him. He was such a cool guy. And one of those guys that you hear nice things about. Exactly. And then when I did one of the episodes of Dinah, because he was dating Dinah for a while. Right. So before I did the episode with her, I had to go in the green room, and Bert was sitting in the green room. So I said, hey, Bert, it's Michael Gray. I played your brother in Run, Simon, Run. He goes, wow, haven't seen you in ages. How are you, buddy? I said, fine. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's great. Yeah. We ended up hugging each other, patting each other back. It was great. That's so funny. I, I remember that. Was, I don't know if it was a little controversial that those two were together because she was, I think she was quite a bit older, if I'm not mistaken. She was, yes. And um, yeah, what a beautiful lady. No taking. Oh, she was gorgeous. Yeah. You talk yeah. about nice. I loved working with her. She was so nice. <sighs> Again, those, those are the ones you like to hear about, right? Yeah. And one of the cool things, too, one of the episodes you did with her, the other celebrity on the show was Jerry Lewis. Ooh. 
And I was such a fan of Jerry Lewis's. So I thought, oh my gosh, I'm working with Jerry Lewis and Dinah Shorts. Amazing. I was so thrilled to meet him. Yeah. And, well, his reputation is not not the most sparkling when it comes to meeting new people, from what I understand. Right. Yeah. So how was he with you? Well, he was cool with me until I had to go off stage and come back on again. And Jerry used to do a thing where he'd throw a cigarette up in the air and catch it in his mouth. I don't know if you remember that. No, I don't. Seems that dangerous. Was he used to do. He would throw a cigarette way up in the air and he'd catch it in his mouth with the filter in his mouth. Oh, wow. So I walked out on stage and I threw a cigarette up in the air and I caught it in my mouth and the audience applauded. And he looked at me and said, I can't believe we just did that. And then he got upset. <laughs> I said, I can't believe it worked. I was doing it to try to be nice to you. So he didn't like that. <laughs> Stealing his act. See? Exactly. There you go again. Stealing someone else's thunder. I don't know. And here he is, a comic legend. Uh, like I say, you hear these things, and you know a good portion of it is true. I just like the happy stories. <laughs> Personally, I don't like to hear about, because I was a huge fan of him, too. Me, too. And that, Even though he got upset with me about that, I didn't care. <laughs> he was such a legend. I loved him when I started growing up. I watched every movie he ever did. He was fantastic. He was so funny. I loved everything he did, even with Dean Martin. Oh, sure. Yeah, so it didn't matter to me, even though he got upset with me. I still loved working with him. It was amazing. Yep, can't take away the fact that he was a master. You just can't. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Well, so that's, uh, again, that's all great memories. And I'm thinking, post this singing attempt thing, that is when... Shazam came into your life, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right? The attempt to be a singer. Now, was this around the same time, or was this before Shazam? It was before Shazam. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Yeah, it was right. It was before Shazam. It was during the Little People, and right after I met, right after I did Run Simon Run, and as I was doing the Little People, that's when the singing thing started. That's when I started taking singing lessons and recording records. Right. Well, of course, we've covered that. So. Let's move on to Shazam. You know, you're most well known for that role, and of course, that's where I became a fan of yours. And, and your your memories, I know, are pretty darn good when it comes to that. I loved it. I loved doing Shazam. It was fantastic. It was so much fun doing it. And we had so many great guest stars that came on. It was amazing. Oh, that's true. That's true. It was funny because I'm I was looking at the name Captain Marvel. I'm curious about what you think about how many different ways and times that that name has been used describing different characters. Yeah. Yeah. There have been several Captain Marvels. <laughs> A little confusing, yeah. to say the least. And then, of course, add to the fact that there were two Captain Marvels on your show. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's like, how many are there? And now this one's a girl? Wait a minute. Now I'm really exactly, confused. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I was a girl, Captain Marvel, yeah. Well, my dad had friends. He told me back in Chicago where he grew up, and then we grew up, you know, I grew up in Miami Beach after we left Chicago. But he told me a lot of his friends that he grew up with in Chicago that were his age said, Hey, Phil, your son's Captain Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> and my dad loved hearing that. He used to tell me that. I, he kept telling my kids Captain Marvel. <laughs> and don't you forget it. Yeah, I was actually Billy Batson. I said Shazam turned into Captain Marvel, but whatever the case may be, right. they said I was Captain Marvel. <laughs> Not to confuse the subject anymore, folks, but yes, Billy Batson and Captain Marvel were one and the same. That's yes. <laughs> Except Captain Marvel was much taller than me, <laughs> like everybody else's. <laughs> yeah, I guess that just didn't matter. I mean, you literally morphed into an entirely different person rather than, you know, Michael Gray with a cape. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yep. And and how would have that been for you? I mean, what if you had to wear the rubber suit and and the cape? And I mean, <laughs> was that something that you kind of wished you were able to do with this show, or did you, you have no problems with them using a, a completely different actor? I had no problem with it. It would have been fun to wear it, but I had no problem with it. There was one episode where Les Tremaine and I were working season one. And I said Shazam, and back in season one, they they when I said Shazam and I did the the conversion into Captain Marvel, there was smoke. So when the smoke cleared, because they had a little thing on the ground that sort of lit up, 
and the cloud of smoke. So I would say Shazam, and then the smoke would clear, and Captain Marvel would be standing behind the smoke. There was one episode where Les Tremaine put on Captain Marvel's outfit. <laughs> so when the smoke cleared, Les Tremaine was standing there wearing Captain Marvel's outfit. He was so funny. He had a great sense of humor. Well, I'll guess that you didn't make it quite through that scene. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> He had a fabulous sense of humor. He used to do so many funny things on the set. He was hysterical. That would have been great. That would have been a great outtake. Do, do you yeah. guys actually have an outtake reel from the show that you know of? We don't know what happened to it. Everybody wanted to know because there were things people wanted to see. Yeah. I wanted to see, too. There was one scene where Les and I were sitting in the, the RV, and every every shot we every show we did was on location in the summer. So some days it was 110 degrees outside. Uh, so one day we were sitting inside the RV shooting a scene. It was 110 degrees outside. And they had all these big lights out in front of the RV lighting up through the windshields. They could see less than I in the RV. <laughs> and the windshield cracked. It broke open. From the heat. From the heat of the sun plus the lights. It was so hot outside. So the windshield cracked open. So less and the camera, the camera was shooting. And we had a camera, we had a um, a guy lying on the floor with a microphone recording both of us because we were doing a scene. So when the windshield cracked, Les looked over at me and said, in Captain Marvel's character, he said, what the F was that? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I don't know, mentor. <laughs> I have no effing idea. What that <laughs> so the director yelled, cut, this is a children's show. What are you guys doing? So Les and I started laughing really hard, and we want to know what happened to that. That would have been a great outtake reel. <laughs> well, see, and you guys knew. You, you knew the scene wasn't going to be used, so why not? Why not have some fun with it? Yeah. And he never knew what Les was going to do. He was so funny. While well, you guys are in this box frying to do your job. <laughs> not just yeah. trying, but frying to do your job. Yeah. And the crew was laughing hysterically. They couldn't believe it. The director didn't like it, but the crew loved it. The crew was laughing so hard. <laughs> well, it is, isn't it great, though, that the tension of the uh, the tedium or whatever can be broken like that every now and then, rather than just, you know, stick to the stick to the lines. We're going to get to exactly. the next, next scene. Got to get, got to move. Got to, you know, it's like. Yep. <laughs> it seems like in some cases it's uh, it's needed, you know, screw a couple up. Of course, I mean, blooper reels or uh, outtakes weren't. <laughs> films weren't that popular at that at that time but it, it is great to see a lot of these that that pop up every now and then and maybe just maybe someday it'll surface that'd be great people ask me that all the time were there any blooper reels any outtake reels that are around they are what they call christmas reels too and i said i don't know where they are there, there's definitely some float around somewhere no one seems to know right Right. That's like people keep asking me too, where's the RV? I said, I don't know. <laughs> Still out in the desert cooking. That <laughs> yeah, could be. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, what a great thing to, to have in your memory books. Um, we're all so appreciative of the work that you did on that show because it was, I mean, it was one of my favorites and I know, I know Barry King loved it too. And so you were part of our, our youth and uh, we just really appreciate that. I know that in the recent years, and, and we were talking about this before we before I actually pushed record, you were telling me a story in regards to being on Archer that I thought was really interesting. I went, wait, wait, you got to save it. <laughs> wait, and let me record it, which I am doing now. How did the Archer gig actually come into, into play? Well, my son was watching an episode one night, and I wasn't watching it. And he was, he called me, he was somewhere else. He called me and said, Michael, he's my stepson. He didn't call me dad, he called yeah, me Michael. So he said to me, Michael, I'm watching Archer and they just mentioned your name. I said, really? He said, yeah, Archer was lying out by the pool. He had a memory problem, memory issues. So we asked the lady in the scene with him, what was that guy's name that played Billy Batson on Shazam? And she looked at him and he said, oh, I remember. It was Michael Gray. So my son called me and told me they mentioned your name on Archer. So I contacted Adam Reed. I found his phone number. And Adam Reed was the creator or? The creator, the executive producer, the mm -hmm. director, the writer. Right. Of Archer. So I found his phone number. So I forgot how I found it. I think I got it through Screen Actors Guild or whatever. And I contacted him. And I thanked him very much for doing that for me. 
And he said, you're welcome. He said, I used to love watching Shazam. I love watching Shazam. I'm glad you like that. I said, I did. He said, would you like to be on an episode of Shazam? I said, I'd love it. So we talked for a little while. The next thing I knew, they cast me in two episodes, one called Drastic Voyage 1, then Drastic Voyage 2. Then they cast me in two more a few years later. So I loved it. Playing TV's Michael Gray. And the first scene I was in, one of the ladies said to people sitting in the audience on the stage where I walked out, I said, this is Michael Gray from Shazam. And Archie said, of course it was. Right. I know who he was. I love watching Shazam. He was also on The Little People. He said, I know. I love that, too. So it was very cool. <laughs> right, right. And what was the line? And who's Brian Keith? <laughs> his line was, now you're just trying to p me off. <laughs> that was great. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was so funny. Those those episodes are great, folks. If you can find them, um, look for the the Michael Gray episodes on Archer. They're, they're a blast. Um, yeah, I got a real kick out of that. Ta-da! <laughs> yeah, when I do Comic-Cons, I have pictures of me from the Archer episodes lying on my table. And so many people look at them, oh, yeah, I used to watch Archer. I liked, I, I still do. I like the fact you were in it, especially the younger people. Right. They love looking at pictures of me on Archer, you know, photos of me on, from, the, from the episodes. Right. Right. Well, there you go. You bridge you bridged the gap. <laughs> the generation gap gets bridged with Archer. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> or, or you arch the gap. Oh, that's bad. Um, well, it's so great that people are fond of the show, fond of the memory of the show, and thus getting you involved in their projects. And that's just that's just how it should be. As if I was in control of everything. That that's how it would be. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. Michael, it's been awesome. As always, it's just an incredible pleasure to talk to you and hear some of your memories of these the show business life that you led. It's a blast. And so thank you again for joining me. So, Michael, can you tell folks where to find you online? You want to talk about follow, follow me on social media? Yeah. Yeah, okay. They, Twitter, um, TV's Michael Gray, number one. The number one, actually. TV's Michael Gray, number one. On Facebook, um, Michael Gray Shazam. And Michael Billy Batson Gray. Got it. And the same thing on um, Instagram, on Michael Gray Shazam. Great. And I'll leave the links to all of these in the description, folks. So definitely uh, become part of Michael's social media community. I post a lot of stuff on social media, especially when I'm going to do more comic cons. I tell people where I'm going to be. They can come see me, come meet me. I tell them I want to meet them too. Absolutely. I do. Yeah, I love meeting fans at comic cons. That's one of the best things about doing comic cons. Not only meeting the celebrities that are there, are some great celebrities, but meeting the fans too. I love meeting them. Right, right. Well, and that's the thing. With social media, you can keep up to date on all Michael's doing and what he's got coming up and all of the above. So with that, I want to thank you, TV's Michael Gray, for being on Retro TV Trivia. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, podcast Pat McCormick. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. So there you have it, another Retro TV Trivia episode in the books. Remember to check out and follow Michael Gray on his various social media platforms, to which I have included links to in my description. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and give me a positive rating and review, or simply share it and spread the word. Until next time, I'm your host, Pat McCormack, and I'll leave you with this singular word to reflect upon. Shazam! Shazam!